guys, it's Jacob from StringBuzz here. StringBuzz.org being the music journalism site. Links are in the description down below. And Childish Gambino has finally released a new song. This time called Me and Your Mama. If you're wondering why I'm looking up here, it's because I'm looking at the original article that was posted to StringBuzz earlier today. And we're going to review this track for you today. At least Donald is back with a brand new song. That's, that's my main takeaway from this track. If you don't already know, I'm a huge fan of Childish Gambino. I think he's one of the most unique rappers on the face of the earth. And he's one hell of a songwriter as well. I've yet to hear a track by him that I truly dislike. Uh, sure, there are some which I'm not a big fan of. But I never really disliked the product as a whole, so, you know, I've never really disliked one of his songs. He always puts a ton of effort into tracks and steers clear of predictable nuances that are, the mod that are appearing far too often in the modern rap genre. Anyways, onto the subject at hand here. What did I think of Me and Your Mama? No, I'm not saying that, you know, colloquially. I'm meaning about the song here. Well, you're about to find out, and I mean about the song as well. Uh, the track is certainly intricate and well written, but I didn't really connect with it on a level I was sort of hoping to. I mean, the track has a very little amount of flaws, but for some reason I just couldn't get into it. I know, don't know whether that's because I, it just felt a little bit disjointed or whether I just didn't find the song that catchy, but I think it's kind of a, a blend of both, really. Production-wise, I can barely fault the thing. The guitars, when they kick in, have beautiful tones, especially the clean tone on the guitar. That sounded gorgeous. The drums sound fantastic, covering the low and mid ends well, and the vocal performance threw me back to soul music of old, so it gave me a nostalgic feeling, which is always great. I felt a real Joe Cocker vibe from the 60s type mix, and I personally love that. I'm a big fan of Joe Cocker, and I'm a big fan of uh, Childish Gambino, so combining the two, I, I didn't expect going into this song, but it sounded great. The only part of the mix which I can really fault is the bass. For some reason, the bass had this very strange tone that didn't carry for very long, and to me, I think that's what happens when you, you pluck bass on a song like this because when a, when a song's quite intricate and, and quite depthy in, in the way that it's not really rock music or metal music but you know with more drier instrumentation when you pluck a bass it, it, you, you do hear it the timbre sounds a bit strange for a low end type mix and musicality wise the song is pretty great to be honest it's progressive it's unpredictable and it contains sections of instrumental imagination that i'm incredibly jealous of each section sounded detailed and well arranged and I can't honestly fault the effort put into this track, however it just did come across very disjointed. Uh, the sections do not transition very well and rather lumber across each other. Now that is probably meant to be purposeful and he probably meant to you know, disconnect each part of the song. It probably sounds much better on a record is what I'm trying to say. It's probably like a filler song that takes one song to another, like a bit of an interlude really. The whole song came across like a bit of an interlude. But here I just found the transitions very sort of abrupt and, and, and blunt and it didn't work for me here. Also, like I mentioned earlier, it's not that catchy and we didn't really get a cohesive melody throughout the whole song. That means I have nothing to hold on to or really hum once the, once, once the song's finished. I had nothing to really remember it by. In, and I'll, I'll go into the lyrics here, which will sort of explain myself further. The lyrics are actually quite bad when you see them on paper, but the performance allows this to be swept under the radar, mostly because I couldn't really understand what he was singing because there was a huge lack of diction. And that's the problem for me here. It's not catchy because I, I can't get what he's trying to say here. I can't, I can't follow the melody he's trying to introduce because it just seems like a lot of wailing. I mean, if you saw my Mary J. Blige review, you'll know that I'm not a really big fan of over wailing specific notes because it takes away from the, the cohesion of a melody. And I think that's been proven yet again here. All in all then, though this review sounds a little bit negative, I'm not too disappointed. In fact, I'm quite excited for the new record and imagine it'll sound much better in a set list rather than it's on, on its own as a single. Uh, although I didn't connect with this track, I can see the vast majority of people really enjoying this track and can see fans really liking this. There's a great deal of fan service in this track and I think for the more intelligent music fan, I think you're going to take a great deal of fun out of this track no matter what you, whether you connect with it on a, on a more intimate basis. So I gave this one a 6 out of 10, and I thought it was really well arranged, I thought it was really well writ written, rather, but it's not particularly catchy. So I'd love to hear what you think about this song in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, check out my other reviews if you enjoyed this one. Like I said, links are in the description down below if you want to go to String Buzz, there's plenty more content there, and I'll see you around next time. Bye bye